subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, viewers. Welcome to Joy Learning Channel. This is Senior High School R Form 2. I am Wisdom Agba Senior and always with the one enjoying chemistry with you. What do we have today? Many are the things we have in our home. You can talk about tomatoes, talk about vinegar, talk about washing powder, talk about toothpaste, talk about caustic soda, bleach, and so on and so forth. Those things are containing bases and acid. In our bodies, you take oranges, you take pineapple, you take watermelon, you even take lime. But it doesn't affect your body in any way. It rather gives you good health. Why is it so? Is there something in our bodies that is working to control those things that we take in our bodies. Yes, there is something in our bodies. You go to the hospital, you are given infusion. The infusion you are given is acidic in nature. But it rather gives you good health. Why is it so? These and many things are explained by buffer solutions. So in this lesson, we want to talk about buffer solutions. When we talk about buffer, in the military, they go for peacekeeping where there is conflict between the military and the civilians to prevent the civilians going to attack the military of that country or the military attacking the civilians some other country military men from other countries will go there to be between the two fighting groups those from the other country to be between the fighting military and civilians in that country, we refer to them as creating a buffer zone so that they will be able to put the two fighting groups apart and there will not be any more. Then we describe them as peacekeepers. So we can also see buffer solutions in chemistry as peacekeepers. Why is it so? So we will define what buffer solution is. Whenever we talk about acids and bases, then what comes to mind, we can talk about hydrogen ion concentration in solution. And then hydroxide ion concentration in solution. And there will lead us to pH and pOH. But the most commonest that we can easily talk about is the pH. There will be pH changes as a result of the presence of hydrogen ions in solution. So all the foodstuffs, all the substances I have mentioned, the acidic ones will produce H plus ions in solution. That can change the state of the solution. So in order to resist 
any change, any significant change in the life of a solution, we come with buffer solutions. What then is a buffer solution? So look at this on your screen. We have two solutions in picture A and then two solutions in picture B or in B case. And here it is on Buffett. And this one is Buffett. Now an acid is added to it. Let's say 0 0.1 mole per dm cubed of an acid is added. The commonest acid we have in our labs, we can talk about ACO, we can talk about HNO3, we can talk about H2SO4. Or the basis, common ones, NaOH, KOH, CaOH, and so on and so forth, is added to the two solutions. You realize that there is a change in color of the unbuffered one, moving from yellow to red. It means that the pH has changed. That is why it is bringing about the change in color. Take note, we are using indicators. And indicators have one color in one medium, let's say acidic medium, and it has another color in basic medium. That is where there is a change in color. But if you look at the Buffett one, it is still yellow. So it means that the pH has not changed. So what is the function of the buffer then? It resists changes in pH. When a small amount of acid or base is added, that's a buffer solution. So a solution that resists any significant change in pH on addition of small amount of acid or base. That is a buffer solution. So this is so simple and straightforward. You should be able to keep it. Whenever you are asked, you should be able to produce the definition as it is. Now, what make the buffer or types of buffer depending on the content of that solution? So we can have weak acid buffer and that you will have a weak acid and its salt or conjugate base. Conjugate base of an acid is an ion and it is intangible you can't touch it you cannot even see it with your naked eye so for me to be able to use it or for it to be useful to me then it must form a salt and then the conjugate base as i said it's an anion so i need a metal to form a salt with it therefore for a weak acid buffer, we will have the weak acid and its conjugate base. And of course, it will form salt. So this one is vinegar, tangible. And then this one is a solid substance, salt, that we can touch. Then other examples will follow. This is the most common example that you can easily give. But what about, I have forgotten this one. Don't worry, just identify a weak acid 
example HNO2. Uh -huh. You see, and then there will be a conjugate base as NO2 minus. So if it is an anion, find a cation and add to it. And not just a cation, but the most common one. So the most common one is sodium. Because sodium salts are common. And in our school laboratories, we can easily get sodium salt to work with. You don't go and get salts that you can't find easily. That is why we always give these examples using sodium. So if I have this weak acid, all I need to do is to have the sodium salts of that weak acid. So it means that another example should be HNO2 forward slash NANO2 will also do a good buffer. So take note of the examples so that if you are asked to give examples, don't hesitate. They are just by you. Then we can also talk about weak base buffer. So the weak base buffer, as the name suggests, we are looking at a weak base and eight conjugate acid. And then, of course, the conjugate acid will form a salt. So if it produces the conjugate acid, it's a cation. So it will pick up an anion to form a salt tangible example very common example is the ammonia and ammonium chloride when the ammonia picks up hydrogen ion it becomes h n4 plus that is a cation so that is the conjugate acid for the weak base ammonia so this can pick up a chloride anion to form a salt. Ammonium chloride is a soluble salt, forms colorless solutions when you dissolve it in water. Then I can also have Na2CO3, sodium carbonate. It's also a solid substance, highly soluble in water. So I can have HCO. 3 minus, you see, that is an anion. So it can pick up a cation to give us the salt. Now, this one here, according to Bronsel Laurie, this man here can give off its hydrogen ion to create the carbonate anion or it can accept hydrogen ion to produce H2CO3 that is carbonic acid and carbonic acid is a weak acid so if we have a conjugate base then it can pick up and then form a salt so it can also create a buffer solution that we can describe as weak base buffer. Is there any other way? Look at this one. Ammonia. So if I have ammonia there, what shall I do? I can have ammonium bromide. You see. So it's not that let me keep these two. But can you reason out of one for yourself? Not because I have given these examples, therefore that is what you hold on to. No. This ammonium chloride and then ammonia, you can have some other examples in terms of ammonia and the ammonium salt. So this is... A typical example. What about if I replace the BR with a sulfate? So I can 
get another example as h3 forward slash nh42so4 that could also be another example so there are different ways of deducing the buffer substances or substances that to make up a good buffer Number three type could be anion of weak acid and cation of weak base. So when you put them together, they can also form a buffer. So the anion from a weak acid and then a cation from a weak base can make. So let's have HNO2. This is a weak acid. And then a cation from a weak base. So I can have the ammonium cation. So in this case, if I have that minus, then it can pick up that. For me to have NH4, NO2. You see, so this can also qualify. Because we are saying that a cation from a weak base and an anion from a weak acid. So this can also be a typical example of a buffer substance. Then we can have other forms of buffer. You can have that CH3, NH4. This one should be 4 there. And then CH3CO and A plus can also be. Then in our bodies, we have proteins. Proteins are also buffers in our body systems. Why are they buffers? Because it has the weak base side and then weak acid side. So if I give you a general example of amino acid when you bring amino acids together it gives you a protein a protein so if i have that this is carbon that is r side chain i have h there then i can have coo h there and then i can have n h2 there so this is the carboxylic acid part of amino acid and this is the amine part of the amino acid and this is the weak base and then that is the weak acid so at the end of the day we can create an anion there and we can create a cation here and so on so proteins are also buffers and of course they are in our bodies. What are the conditions for buffers? A buffer must contain an acid to react with any OH minus ions added to it and a base to react with any H plus ions added to it because the base will produce OH minus and then the acid will produce H plus so if these people from external source are not taken care of it will go to change the pH and then the system will be affected but when buffers are there the buffers will take care of them and they will not disturb the piece of the solution. So the example, the military I give, if the civilians are coming to disturb, the then they will say, cool down. When the military is coming to disturb, the they will say, cool down. At the end of the day, there is peace. There is no interaction. You see, so that's why I say chemistry is, is everyday life. Just see it as everyday life and you will not find it difficult. You will enjoy it every day. You get it? Yes. 
then the acid and base component of the buffer must not must not consume each other in a neutralization reaction other than that no buffer will exist because for example if i have hcl plus naoh it will give me nacl plus h2o so this is a neutralization reaction so if you have these guys in solution it will form salt and water if you add any acid it will change the ph if you add any base it will change the ph therefore this cannot be a buffer or cannot produce buffer solution so to satisfy this requirement you will need the weak acid at eight conjugate pair and then the weak base and eight conjugate pair to make room for any external OH minus ions or H plus ions that may come into the solution. Mechanism of buffers. How do buffers behave? How do they resist pH changes? And that is the mechanism. Or did, how do they function to resist pH changes? That is all about it. It's not anything you should be worrying. You say mechanism. Hey, what is me? No, no, it's simple. How do they function as buffers? How do they resist pH changes? You see, so it's as simple as that. So let's look at how they do that. So action of weak acid buffer. And of course, I said that these are the most commonest examples that you can easily find. So if you put them in water, the salt here will dissolve completely because it's a salt. As for salt, we don't have weak salt and we don't have strong salt. Salt is salt. When it is in water, it will dissociate completely into the anion and the cation making up the salt so the sodium ethanoate will, dis will dissociate into the ethanoate anion and then the sodium cation and then of course we have the ethanoic acid which is a weak acid so that one will, dis will dissociate partially in solution as the ethanoate anion and hydrogen ion so this will be in the buffer solution. So if I have my beaker like that, I dissolve this and then that in water. So that is our buffer. So these ions will be in the solution. You see, and of course, the weak acid will be in equilibrium with the ions in solution because it is dissociating partially. Solution. So, as the equations are here, you can determine what will happen when there is a base. So, when there is a base, the base will release OH minus ions in solution. It's a minus. And then we have a cation there and an, an, a, a cation here. The sodium cation and then the hydrogen ion. But when the OH minus is coming, the affinity for the OH minus ions is to the advantage of H+. plus. So it means that the H plus can easily pick up the OH minus ions than the Na plus picking up the OH minus ions. So the OH minus ions will rather be picked up by the H plus rather than the Na plus. And of course, as you can see, if that happens, OH minus plus H plus we will form water. You see, you will form water. So water is 
part of the solution. So that's good news. Now, if this one goes away, this man here must be replaced. So if it must be replaced, the whole system will move to the right direction. That is equilibrium. The equilibrium system will move to the right direction, producing more of the H plus ions. You see. <laughs> so in that case, the system is stable. The effect has been taken care of. So we said that the buffer has resisted pH changes. So let's put it in context. Dilute acid added. So if we add an acid, all the H plus added is taken out by the ethanoic anion to form the ethanoic acid. So this is the reaction. So when you add an acid to it, what happens? You are producing more of the CH3COOH. So from our equation earlier on, we had CH3COONA producing CH3COO- minus plus Na+. Plus. And then we have CH3COOH equilibriumly producing CH3COO- minus plus H+. Plus. You see, so if there is an acid that is producing H plus ions, where will it go? It will be picked up by the ethanoid anion to form the acid. So the whole equilibrium system will move to the left hand side because we are producing more of the CH3 COOH. And you will realize that we have excess of the ethanoid anions in solution. So at the end of the day, that H that is coming will be taken care of, thereby stabilizing the pH of the solution. Are you following? Take your time and follow it well. Right. So, due to excess CH3CO minus in solution, little or no change in pH is experienced. That's all. What about if a base is added? I have already commented on that. So the H plus there, from the acid, our original equation, CH3COONA producing CH3COO minus plus Na plus, and then CH3COOH equilibriumly producing CH3COO minus plus H plus. Now, OH minus is coming from a base. So, as I said, the affinity of the OH minus ions for H plus is higher than that for the Na plus. So, it will go for the H plus, producing water as we have it here. So, in that case, the H plus, that is, the OH minus that is coming will be taken care of. Now the H plus that is taken away must be replaced. Otherwise, there will be trouble. So in the process of replacing the lost H plus ions, the equilibrium will shift to the right. More of the weak acid will dissociate to replace the lost H plus ions. In that case, everything is stable. So more CH3COH dissociate to replace the H plus ions used up. So making the pH remain virtually constant. It's very, very interesting. Let's also look at weak base buffer, how it behaves. So we are using the most common example NH3 and then NH4 
seal. So we have this in the equilibrium system. So if I have my beaker with a solution inside, I have these ions. Now, of course, this one is a weak base, so it is in equilibrium with its ions. And here, this is a salt, so it will dissociate completely. So we have those guys. Now, what do you think? If you watch it carefully, there is an acid producing H+, and then there is a base producing OH- ions. So what do you think will happen? This one is simple. Attraction, attraction, attraction. So when H plus ions come into this solution, we have OH minus there. Then we have CO minus there. You see? So the affinity for OH minus ions by the H plus is higher than picking up the CL minus. So because of that, the H plus will go for the OH minus ions and of course to form water as we saw already. So OH minus plus H plus giving us water. What about OH coming in? So if OH comes in, we have excess of NH4 plus. So the NH4 plus will pick the OH to give us ammonium hydroxide. And this ammonium hydroxide can dissociate into ammonia, that is the weak base, plus water. You see. So replacing them means that Ammonia and water must react to replace the lost ammonium cation and the OH minus ions. So doing, the pH of the solution is kept virtually constant. Right, so let's put them into... Writing so dilute acid added when you add dilute acid, all the H plus is used out by OH minus to form water. Then the equation must come. And then what happens? Dilute base added, all OH minus react with the ammonium cation to form ammonia and water. Please don't be confused, you can also have it as. Ammonium hydroxide, as I said earlier. Okay, so you have to watch carefully because I can represent it as this. If you don't take care, you get confused. So the OH minus is producing that. So instead of writing the ammonia and water, you can write ammonium hydroxide. Take note of it. Right, so more ammonia and water react to produce more ammonium cation and OH minus ions to replace what have been used up by the added base or acid. And so when that happens, we say that the solution is absorbing those ions that are coming to destabilize. So when they are absorbed or they are taken care of or they are killed, then there will not be any change in pH. Of the solution. So that is how buffer solutions resist pH changes. Buffer capacity or buffering capacity. Here is just simply talking about how effective the buffer is. If I have a buffer solution, Then I add 0 0.1 mole per dm cubed of HCl solution. 
and then the color changes, then it means that that buffer is not effective for 0.1 mole per dm cube ACL. But if the color doesn't change, then we can describe that solution as very effective. So here it is specific. If I have the same volume of a buffer solution, then this one to add 0 0.1 mole per dm cubed of say ACO. And then case A, case B. If case A changes color and case B doesn't change color, it means that case B is more effective than case A. That's all. So what makes it effective? Means that we will have to have more of the substances we are using to prepare the buffer solution. If we use small, it will be less effective concerning or per what the concentration of the acid or the base you are going to use or you are going to add to it to determine. So it's, it's specific to the concentrations of the acid and the base. So the effectiveness depends on the amount of acid and its conjugate base that we are using to prepare the solution. So if, for example, one of the composition is say two grams of the acid and then say two grams of the conjugate base and of course that will be a salt then i have another preparation that contains one gram one gram each it means that the two gram buffer solution will be more effective than the one gram solution that's all it means so the larger the amount, the greater the buffering capacity. And then, of course, we want to look at how important buffer solutions are. Buffer solutions are very, very, very important. The first one is the biological system. And whenever we are talking about biological system, we are talking about the living system that the human body, animals, and plants. All the functioning of the cells, the organs, the organ systems, the tissues of living systems depend on pH changes. Otherwise, trouble. So it is known that if there is a change of plus or minus 0 0.5 in pH in our bodies, it will be fatal. It can cause death. So if that is the case, then how will our bodies survive? That is why God in his own wisdom has created buffers. A while ago, I said that proteins are buffers in our bodies. And then, of course, we have the carbonic acid. It's also a buffer in our system. This one, this is how CO2 and water are carried in our bodies. So at the exchange point, it will break down into CO2 and water. And CO2 has to do with breathing. So breathing exercise also brings about the working of buffer systems in our body. You see, so you can take all the oranges, you can take all the bananas, every day you take them. That is even giving you good health. You go to the hospital, they give you infusion for good health. 
It doesn't affect because there are buffers in your system that will take care of whatever pH change that might be brought by these acidic substances that we take in our bodies. So the pH of a healthy normal human blood is about 7.4 or 7.5. You see, so each and every given moment, this is the pH of our body. So from here, you can even calculate the hydrogen ion concentration in our blood. Okay. Gastric juice has a pH of 1.5. So if you calculate a concentration of that, that concentration is enough to dissolve zinc metal. If you have seen zinc metal before, that is why you are enjoying your favorite food and you swallowed a bone. The next day you go to the washroom, you don't see the bones in your Fixes. What happened to it? It has been dissolved by the stomach acid. So you don't see. You see it. <laughs> you see, that's the beauty of chemistry. You don't see it. So the pH values, they also help how enzymes should function. So the enzymes will function, they function in digestion and a whole lot of life processes for good health. See, so God is a chemist. Eh? <laughs> so all these, they balance osmotic pressure and are uh, maintained by buffer solutions. So this is just in medicine, buffers are very, very important. In intravenous injections, you go to the hospital, they give you infusion, what you call water. And they will pass it through a tube and then into your veins. You see. But it's rather giving you good health. Why? Because of buffers. The infusion you are taking is acidic. When it enters your body, the buffer system in your body will take care of whatever pH changes it is bringing. That results into good health. So the next time you go to the hospital, and then the nurse is giving you infusion, you can ask the nurse a lot of questions about the infusion that he or she is giving to you. In agriculture, very, very important buffers are very, very important. Industrial processes, they are important. Those canned food you eat and so on, the container can drift into the food substance. If it is a metal can, the metals, let's say iron, iron salts can form acidic solutions. So that will change the pH of the food. But there are buffers in there that will take care of it. So in dying, in fermentation, all the enzymes that will take care of this fermentation process will have to operate in a specific pHs. So if you are in, say, alcohol manufacturing or ethanol manufacturing industry, you have to control the system well. Otherwise, the pH changes will kill or will denature. And then, of course, don't forget, temperature also counts in there. So you will not achieve great fermentation, and that can affect the income for the industry. So we have natural buffers, as we talked about already. The last thing we want to talk about is the common ion effect. So when I was talking about the function of the buffer system, 
we're talking about a shift in equilibrium, shift there to take care of whatever it is coming in, shift here to take care of whatever it is coming in here. So the idea of common ion effect is being applied. So what is it? A shift in equilibrium caused by the addition of compound that has an ion in common with the dissolved substance. So for example, the, our friend we are using, if I have CH3COOH reversibly producing CH3COO minus plus H plus, then I bring the conjugate base that is forming the salt, CH3COO minus plus N A plus, you see. So the salt we have dissolved, it producing ethanoate anion. That is common to what the main thing, that is the acid, has produced. So you can just imagine what will happen. This is what is being produced by the acid. Now the salt is also producing the same thing. So we have more of the ethanoate anions in solution. So in that case, it will cause the dissociation of the weak acid to shift in equilibrium because there is more. We don't need any. So you have to go back. So in going back, the equilibrium will shift to the left, thereby suppressing the production of H plus ions in solution. So we can explain that in terms of acidity, the strength of the acid. So it means that if I dissolve only CH3COOH in solution, it will be more acidic than if I dissolve CH3COONA and CH3COOH in solution. You get because of common ion effects. So that's it. And then this is an example I have given already. So take note of it. So this is what happens. More of that, the equilibrium will shift that way, releasing less of this. So a mixture of the solution of this will be less acidic than a solution containing only the ethanoic acid. That is represented or taken care of by Le Chatelier's principle because we are talking about equilibrium shifting. So it is Le Chatelier's principle that takes care of that. If you have already studied equilibrium systems, you have talked about Le Chatelier's principle. So the ethanol and ion ions from this added to the solution of this suppresses the ionization of this one. So H plus in solution gives us acidic solution. If there is more, then we say that acid is strong. If it is less, we say it is weak. So because it is producing few H plus ions in solution, as a result of mixing it with the sodium ethanoate, we said that the mixture will be less acidic than if you dissolve only that. And that the equilibrium shift from the product side to the reactant side. So hydrogen ion concentration decreases. And if the hydrogen ion concentration decreases, that will also tell us that the acidity will also be low. Therefore, Solution containing this will be less acidic than only that, as I said already. So, Azam can ask you, explain why the solution of the mixture of this is less acidic than a solution of only this. You use the knowledge of common ion effect to explain it. Is that okay? Right. Thank you for enjoying the lesson.
on Joy Learning Channel with me, Wisdom and Wesinara, as with the one. Keep on learning chemistry on Joy Learning Channel. Joy Learning Channel, keep learning. Bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.